All right. <clears throat> Welcome to term three, lesson five. My name is Mr. Karthik. Okay, now we are tutor. All right. So, yep. Give me a moment. Okay, so the usual, right? <clears throat> I'm from Math Accelerator Center and we're located at One Marine Point Central and we specialize in mathematics. We help students turn their results around within a short period of time, especially by one or two grades. Okay. So the objective of today's lesson and probably most of the lesson, right? Is to help you all who, especially those who are struggling with problem sums and to improve your pro, your confidence in solving these problem sums, especially problem sums with a lot of words, right? Those kind, let me get a moment. Yeah, so those kind of problem sums, right? This uh, session helps you to improve your confidence in it and we'll show how to <clears throat> solve it systematically, okay? And to prepare you for your prelims and term three weighted assessment, okay. So as I mentioned in the chat earlier on, right? So uh, when the questions, after I go through the questions when the end, try not to lose, okay? Because there'll be a bonus quiz where I'll be sending y'all a link, okay? So this is like the, the second last lesson of term three. So we have a special contest for you. So it is the bonus quiz. And you stand a chance to win $50 worth of prize, okay? So more information I'll provide you towards the end of the lesson. So just stay beyond for just a short while, right? It won't last. Uh, Two minutes. It's gonna be quite quick, don't worry. All right. Okay, so today's lesson outline. We will be going through two strategies. The first one is finding equivalent ratio. The second one will be single unchanged. And lastly, two higher order thinking questions. All right, so before I begin. Okay, do you all have your worksheets with you? <clears throat> yes, it's good to uh, print out the worksheets. Okay, uh, can you all hear me loud and clear? Can you all type in the chat if you all can hear me loud and clear? All right, okay. So for those of you who can't, um, please adjust your speakers, all right? Okay, all right. So before I begin, some ground rules. So audio as usual be muted throughout the entire session. So please ask questions in the chat when you can, okay? And then no spamming of it. And lastly, listen attentively and have fun. Okay, so let's get right into it. So I give you about a minute to prepare your worksheet, uh, your stationery and whatnot, and we'll begin in just a minute, all right? Okay, so let's begin. So the strategy number one, we're finding equivalent ratio. So we're going to write down two different sets of ratios. Then we will find the identity that's being repeated across the questions. And that particular identity, so on in this sentence will be, let's say, two units. But the next sentence will be at three units, right? So we will try and make them equal by finding the common multiple and find for one unit and solve for the answer. Okay, so let's get right into it. Strategy one, question one. Okay, so at a party, the ratio of the number of adults to the number of girls, sorry, to the number of children was seven is to five. And the ratio 
of the number of boys to the number of girls was three is to five. Okay, whenever you see this kind of question, right? I want you to remember this. Boy, men. Girl, women. This four are four completely different groups, okay? Just because boy and man, they're male, right? But that doesn't mean they're in the same group. Boy usually means a child, a male child. And man usually refers to adults. So child, adult. Same goes for girl and woman. So for girl, right, it's a child, part of a child. And for women, it's an adult. All right? So there'll be a question where they'll say, uh, teachers and students, right? So teachers fall under adult, okay? And students will fall under children. So please remember this. If you can get this right, the rest of the questions would be easy. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Okay, so let's solve this. The ratio of number of adults to number of children. So adults is to children. This is seven, this two, five. Write this down. Okay, so next one, right? We have the ratio of the number of boys to the number of girls. Boys to the number of girls is three is two, five, correct? Okay. So how do I associate this with the ratio over here. Okay, if you did not realize, right, boys and girls, the total, total children is actually eight. Do you agree? Because boys is part of children, girls are also part of children, right? So three plus five equals to eight units. Okay. So next, this eight units and this five units, they're actually the same thing. So, which means we have to find the common multiple of 5 and 8. So, can I type in the chat, what is the common multiple of 5 and 8? Okay, 40. Good. Well done. So the common multiple of 5 and 8 is 40, All right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to multiply it by 5, and we're going to multiply here by 8. So the new ratio here, when you multiply it by 5, multiply it by 8, right? Here also must multiply by 8. Here must multiply by 5, here must multiply by 5. So 7 times 8. 56, 5 times 8, 40. Over here, 40 as well, which is broken down into 25 and 15. So now I need to write the new ratio, adults, is to, okay, instead of children, I want boys and I want girls. So the total of boys and girls must be 40 units, okay? So when you split the 40 units, you get 15 and 25. So write down 15, 25. Adults, 56. All right. So now the question says there were 50 girls. So how many units are, is 50? Can I type in the chat? How many units is 50? Mm -hmm. All right, 25 units is 50. So write down, 25 units is 50. See the 25 here, those 50 goals. So one unit is 50 divided by 25, which equals to two. So find the number of adults at the party. So number of adults is 56 units. 56 times two 
you'll get one, one, two. Easy so far? Okay, it takes some time to copy down. Okay, so can I move on to question number two? All right, okay. Okay, question number two. In the hall, the ratio of the number of teachers to number of students was two is to five. The ratio of the number of boys to girls was one is to five. If there were 20 boys, find the number of teachers in the hall. Okay. So write down teachers is to students. Two is to five. Next. Ratio of the number of boys to the number of girls was one is to five. So if I take the boys and girls and I put them together in one group, right? What is the group called? Can you all type in the chat? I repeat, if I take the boys and the girls, I put them as one group. What is the group called? Yep. Children, correct? Or in this particular case, it's students. So one plus five, so the total number of students, total units of students is actually six units. All right. So now over here, right, we have five units. We have six units. So what's the common multiple of five and six? Can you type in the chat? Okay, well done. Most of you got it correct. 30, right? So which means if I want to achieve 30, here I must multiply here by 5. Here I must multiply here by 6. Because I want them to achieve 30, right? So the multiply by 6 here also must multiply by 6. Here I must multiply by 5. And here I have to multiply by 5. So right now, this is 12 is to 30. This is 30. This is 25, this is 5. So you see the students 30, right? I break them down to 5 and 25. So the question is asking if there were 20 boys, find the number of teachers in the hall. Okay, so what we can do is we can write the new ratio. T is to B is to G. So teachers is 12 units. Boys is five units and girls is 25 units. Okay. So if there were 20 boys, find the number of teachers in the hall. <clears throat> okay. So five units is 20. Find for one unit, 20 divided by five, you'll get four. So there are a total of 12 units of teachers, right? So 12 units is 12 times four, which is 48. So give you about a minute, if I go to question number three. Okay, question number three, let's go. <clears throat> okay, Crystal, Diana, and Eleanor made some bookmarks. Crystal and Diana made some bookmarks in the ratio of seven is to 11. Okay, so quickly write that down. Crystal. Okay. So this part is done, all right? 
Now let's break down the second sentence. Okay, let me use this one. For every bookmark made by Crystal, Dinah and Eleanor would make two. Okay, so they are associating Crystal with both Dinah and Eleanor. Right, so if I'm going to write Crystal is to Dinah plus Eleanor, what is the ratio here? Can you type in the chat? For every one bookmark she makes, this two would make two, right? All right, one is two, two. Okay, so now, right, you see this two ratio. Whose um, ratio has been repeated twice, like clearly? Who is Cindy? There's no Cindy over here. Crystal, correct. Okay. This person's ratio has been repeated twice, right? And there's no change in their ratio, uh, in their value, right? So which means the ratio, we can make it the same. So what's the common multiple of one and seven? Can I type in the chat? Mm. Seven, correct. Common multiple one and seven is seven. So this one, we can just leave it as it is. Four, here, right, we multiply it by seven. Okay, so we multiply it by seven here, so must multiply it by seven. So this is seven is two, fourteen. All right. <clears throat> so now let's write down the new ratio first, okay? So Cindy is to Diana is to Eleanor. So you know that Cindy is seven, Diana is 11. Can you type in the chat, what about Eleanor? If Eleanor alone, what is her unit? Correct. Well done. So D plus E is 14, right? And if D alone is 11, 14 minus 11 will give you three. The three units is Eleanor. So you can write down here, three units. So Eleanor made 64 books, 64 less bookmarks than Crystal. All right, so Eleanor has three, Crystal has seven. So you can take seven units minus three units, you will get four units, okay? So this four units is the 64. Okay, so can you all type in the chat now? Work, work this question by yourself. And type in the chat, what is the answer? Let's see if you can do it. Yes, you can use a calculator. Okay, well done. Most of you got it. So four units is 64, right? So one unit is 64 divided by four. You'll get 16. So they're asking how many bookmarks did Crystal make? So Crystal is seven units. So 16 times seven, you'll get you one, one, two. Okay, good. So I'll now move on to the next strategy. Okay, this strategy, right, trust me, it's very easy, okay? Okay, so for this strategy, we're going to introduce this thing called the before, change, and after. Some of you might have heard it already, but for those of you who didn't, just listen up. So just check which item is unchanged and make that unchanged item equivalent using the common multiple, which we have been doing over the past two, three lessons already. So once you do that, right, you can just find for one unit and then solve it quickly. Okay, I'll show you how. Okay, strategy two. 
So box contains some red and blue marbles in the ratio of two is to five. After 30 blue marbles were added to the box, the ratio became three is to eight. Find the number of red marbles in the box. Okay, from this question, can you tell me which colored marbles did not change? Change in value. Okay, very good. It's red, right? Okay, so what you're going to do is going to write down red is to blue, two is to five. Okay, after 30 blue marbles were added to the box, the ratio became three is to eight. Okay, so can you all write down here? This is before. Okay, next, I'll need to write change. So, y'all did, y'all said that the red didn't change, right? Okay, so you write down as three. And the blue, after adding 30, became eight. So, after, what happened in the after? So the after is where you have to find the common multiple of that item that did not change in value. So most of you say red, right? So at first it was two, two, now it's three. So what's the common multiple of two and three? Six, okay, good, six. So which means here I have to multiply by three, here I have to multiply by two, correct? So you can write it like this. The three and eight is now six and 16. Write it down, please. So after 6 is to 16, right? So before is 6 is to, must multiply by 3 as well. So it's 15. So now if you look at this table, right? At first it was 6 is to 15. Afterwards it became 6 is to 16 when 30 marbles were added. So can you tell me what is the unit of the 30 marbles? Mm, correct. So you take 16 units minus 15 units, you get one unit. That one unit is the 30 marbles. So the question is asking how many red marbles were there, right? So right now, six units is 30 times six, which is 180. Okay, next one. Let's move on to question number two. The ratio of a group of girls to boys in the hall was two is to three. Okay, write down. Girls to boys was two is to three. So this is the before. So next one, after 21 girls joined the group, the ratio became five is to four. You write down change. Okay, so for the change part, right? Okay, no, apologies, it's not 21 here, it's 21 here, because it's the girls that the one has changed. So write down plus 21. The boys did not change. Okay, so after. So after the ratio became five is to four. Okay, so, so you can tell me that the boys, right, is the one that did not change throughout this whole thing, correct? So what's the common multiple of three and four? Can you type in the chat?
12. Okay, so since it's 12, now we're going to change this to 12. So multiply by 4, divide by 3. So this becomes multiply by 3, multiply by 4. So this is 15 over 12, is to 12. This is 8. Is to 12. So now if you read the ratio, right? Before it's 8 is to 12, now it's 15 is to 12. Okay. So what is the change in units for the girls? You take 15 units minus 8 units. That will give you 7 units. All right. So seven units is the 21. So go and find for one unit. 21 divided by seven, you'll get three. So find the number of boys in the hall. So boys is 12 units. So 12 times three, you'll get 36. Okay, next one. Question number Okay, so before I move to question three, let me quickly flash this one again, copy down the solution. Since quite a number of you didn't copy down. Okay, I'll start at 831, right? Answer is 36. Okay, question number three. <clears throat> There's a cafeteria at the site of a swimming pool. The ratio of the number of people swimming in the pool, <clears throat> the number of people at the cafeteria was five is to four. When 49 people left the pool, the ratio became three is to eight. So how many people were there at the cafeteria? Okay, so write down. Pool, cafeteria. That is five is to four. So this is the before. Okay, right now, B. So in 49 people left the pool, right? So there's a change here. There's a change. 29 people left the pool. So what happens after is the ratio became 3 is to 8. So can you tell me which group did not change? Is it P or C? Correct. It's this group here, right? C, cafeteria. So find the common multiple of 4 and 8. What's the common multiple of 4 and 8? Okay, some of you all said 16. Okay, you're not wrong, all right? 16 is correct, but if you look 4, 8, 12, 
is 8, 16, 24, right? Realize 8 is the, common, the lowest common multiple. So choose the easy one. Since 8 is the common multiple, just leave 8 alone. Go and change this one. So times 2, times 2. So this becomes 10 is to 8. All right. So cafeteria did not change. Pool from 10 units became 3 units. So write down 10 units minus 3 units is 7 units. That 7 units is the 49 people that left the pool. 7 units is 49. So 1 unit is 49 divided by 7. So they'll get you 7. Okay, so the question is asking how many people were there at the cafeteria? So 8 units. 7 times 8 goes to 56. Okay, once you're done copying down, right, can you show, um, can you let me know if you had learned units and parts? If you all come across a question in your school revolving around units and parts. Okay, so one of you said a lot, right? Okay, cool. Okay, so your next question will revolve around units and parts. So you have to listen very carefully, okay? All right. Okay, so let's read this question. <clears throat> so just higher order question number one, right? And this fruit stall sells green and red apples. The number of green apples is one fifth as many as the number of red apples. All right. So can you tell me what is the ratio of the number of green apples to the number of red apples? Okay, so from this sentence, right, you have to break it down very carefully, right? If I say I have one fifth as much as you, which means I have one unit and the person I'm relating with, right, has five units. So in this case, right, <clears throat> okay, if I say the number of green apples is one unit and then uh, is one unit and it's one fifth as much as the number of red apples, so means the red apples is five units. So can you all fill in? One unit, five units. All right. Next. Then Andy bought five more green apples. Okay. Plus five. And red apples. Plus 12. So once this happened, right? Now the ratio of the number of green apples to the number of red apples became one is to four. So what you're going to write down is one, but not unit. Because one unit is before five apples were bought, right? So after buying five green apples, it is now one part. It's no longer that same magnitude as the unit, okay? And the red apples is now four parts. So now I'm going to ask you a question, right? What does the one part equal to? Not, I'm not asking for the value, okay? I'm asking that one part equals to what? What plus what? Let's see if you all can, can answer that. Mm, one of you got it correct so far, which is Jake Joab. Is it Sophia? Celine, very good. Shalin also. Krishna. Hama. All right, all of you. Quite a number of you actually. So one part 
okay, as you can see, equals to one unit plus five, right? Okay, very good. So I'm gonna write here, one unit plus five equals to one part. Okay, next. What does four unit, uh, four parts equals to? Can you type? What does four parts equals to? Mm. Well done. So four parts equals to five units plus 12. Okay, so I repeat again. One part equals to one unit plus five. Four parts equals to five units plus 12. All right, now, if I were to, just give me a second. If I were to ask the class, just by using this only, can you tell me what does four parts equals to? Just by using that only. Let's see if you all can tell. Yep, correct. If I'm going to use this alone, four parts would then be times four. So here's so much times four. Here's so much times four. So it's four units plus 20. It's four parts. All right. So far clear? So now, is it safe to assume that these two are the same thing? They're equal, right? Four parts equals to four parts, which means Okay, which means four, four parts equals to four parts, which means four units plus 20 equals to Five units plus 12. You all agree with this? Right. Okay, so how do we solve this then? So there are two methods to solve this, okay? So I'm going to erase this portion here now. Okay, so the first method, right, is by model. Okay, so I'm going to draw a model. These two are the same thing, right? So four units plus 20 equals to five units plus 12. So write that down. So I'm going to write down like this. Four units, 20. Five units, 12. Okay, so from here, right, Let's go and dissect the model. So I'm, I'm more interested in this part here. So this red portion here, right, in terms of unit, what is it? Yep, one unit. And in terms of value, what is it? Correct. 20 minus 12, which is 8. So one unit is 8. So the question is asking how many green apples did Andy have at first, right? So green apples is simply one unit. So therefore, the answer is 8. Okay, so right down here, this is method 1. Method one. Okay, so what is method number two? So let's rewind back to this part over here. Four units plus 20 equals to five units plus 12. So method number two, right, is called crossing the 
bridge. Okay, so you see on the right hand side and the left hand side, right? In terms of unit, which one is the bigger one? Five units, right? N4 is a smaller one, right? So you take five units minus the four unit, you'll get one unit. Now, if you look at the number, 20 is bigger than 12, right? So you write down 20 minus 12 equals to eight. Therefore, one unit equals to eight. This is the crossing the bridge method. Okay, so if you all are comfortable with method one, go for it. If you're comfortable with method two, go for it. Okay, so before you go to the next question, can we fill up the table below in terms of units and parts? So this is one, you can write this down as four units, five units, and 20 plus 12. Then becomes four parts, four parts. Okay, great. So uh, before that, right, uh, for the, the second table, can we just cancel the before, change, and after? And right here, model drawing. Okay. Okay, next question. Question number two. The ratio of Ariel stems to Sarah stems was five is to seven. Belinda had one fifth of what the three girls had all together. Okay. So I want you to highlight this sentence here. Belinda had one fifth of what the three girls had all together. Okay, um, okay, I'm going to rewind back a little quickly, all right? Hmm. That one person I asked to draw the model, can you quickly draw it out? Give you a minute. For the rest of you, just take a pause down there. Okay, can I move on to the next one? Okay, can. Okay, so now, right, can you all highlight this sentence here, please? This sentence is the most important part of this question that will help you break down all the, um, the ratio, okay? So Belinda had one fifth of what the three girls had. So we have three girls involved here, Ariel, Sarah and Belinda, okay? So when they said Belinda have one fifth of what the three girls had, right? So if Belinda is one unit, what can you tell me about Ariel and Sarah? How many units are they? Very good, four. Units. Hmm. So next, we go back to the first sentence. Ariel is to Sarah is five is to seven. So in this scenario here, right, what is their total units? Twelve, correct? In this case, it's twelve, right? Good. So over here is 4, over here is 12. What is the common multiple of 4 and 12? Hmm. 
very good 12 so we can leave this alone we can go and tweak this now so just multiply it by three so here so must multiply by three so this is three it is still 12. and this 12 can be broken down into five and seven right so i'm going to write down belinda is to ariel is to sarah so three is to five is to seven Okay, so let's answer question A, part A. What is the ratio of Ariel to Sarah to Belinda? So write down. So be careful what the question is asking. Okay, so it's A is to S is to B. So it's 5 is to 7 is to 3. So once you're done in part A, part B becomes very easy. If Ariel had 201, 210 stamps, how many did Belinda have? So write down Ariel, five units is 210. So go and find for one unit, which is 210 divided by five which is 42. So how many stamps did Belinda have? So Belinda is three units, which is 42 <laughs> multiplied by three. So it's 126. Mm. Okay, so the time now is 8.50, okay? So um, I announced earlier on, try not to leave because I want to announce something to you guys since it's the second last lesson, okay? So just stay behind. I won't, I won't take this very long, right? Okay, so I'll give you another minute to copy it down before I announce what I want to, wanted to announce. Okay, all right. So I'm going to clear it now. Okay, so for today's lesson, right, which one did you find it to be the most challenging one? Is it strategy one, two, or the higher order? None, okay. Okay, most of you are saying it's higher orders and there's an equal bunch of you that says it's very easy. If it's very easy, then it's all the more better, okay? Right, so it's kind of a split between higher order and none. Okay, wow, impressive. All right. Okay, so I'd like to just remind you that your weighted assessment for primary five, it's in August and for prelims, for primary six prelims is also in August, all right? And PSL is in October and for primary five, your year and exam, if I'm not wrong, it's on August 26th. All right, so it's quite around the corner, right? Mm, 20th of August. It's quite, quite one week's time, exactly one week's time. Okay. All right, so for the upcoming program, for the September boot camp, right? To gear you up for your primary school year, year and exams and um, end of your exams, okay? So our boot camp in September is focused heavily on problem sum strategies, okay? So give me a moment. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put this in the chat here, okay? For you all to take note. Okay, so please take down the link. So this is for our um, holiday bootcamp, right? So if you click on PSLE, okay? It has a countdown that tells you when it will be and you'll be conducted by our very own chief trainer, Mr. Chris Seo, right? Okay, so these are the um, 
Okay, for primary six, right, there's no on, oh, it's mostly online, yes, it's online. And just key in your name, your particular, and press submit, and we'll attend to you within 24 hours. Same goes for primary five, bootcamp. You click on it, key in your particulars, and you submit it, and we'll attend to you within one working day. So the link is provided in the chat, right? So the next one. Okay, so every Wednesday, 8 p.m., right, we have our train, um, tutor, Miss, um, okay, hold on. Yep, she'll be our trainer for the primary three class, okay, which is on every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Okay, so we'd like to invite you to a complimentary trial lesson. So actually, Miss Tia, yes, correct, yes, Miss Tia, thank you. Okay, yeah, so before this, apologies, I would like to just run through this. So the September holiday program is run by our chief trainer, who's also an ex-MOE HOD teacher, right? So he will help you guide for the September bootcamp. So just take note. So the link is over here. Let me just pass it to you. All right, it's good to know, man. Cool. So please take down the link and click which bootcamp you prefer, okay? Just from primary three till primary six. Right. So as usual, we'd like to invite you to a trial lesson to just assess your readiness and to improve your grades within one, one to two, okay? So for the trial lesson, you can visit our website www.parkwaymath.com. Okay, here you go. Okay, so lastly, the one that I wanted to announce to y'all, right? Okay, so what's going to happen is, um, since this is the second last lesson of term three, we have created a special contest for you, right? So you stand a chance to win $50 in price. So how to win it, right? So do you see the link down there? Okay, so let me just highlight the link to you. Okay, so please take down this link, all right? <clears throat> so this link is your quiz. When you're going to click it, please uh, type your name and which level you're from before you start, okay? So this contest will be open for 24 hours starting now till tomorrow at 11.58 p.m. So it's slightly more than 24 hours, okay? But you'll close tomorrow at 11.58 p.m. So it consists of five questions, questions that you have learned so far from lesson one to lesson five. They are all basically clone questions of what you have learned. Nothing, <clears throat> it's nothing different, okay? So we will, So let's say if there are 20 students who scored high grades, right? We'll take the 20 students and we'll select eight winners from them and we'll announce it <coughs> next week, all right? So I repeat again, you have time till 11.58 p.m. Please um, try the quiz and you'll select eight winners from the quiz, all right? All right, so that is all for today. Thank you for joining us. I'll be here for the next five minutes if you all need anything, all right? Take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.